I got two big movies that's gonna be dropping in the fall. Uh, one of them in November. Uh, that's called We Out Here. They're supposed to be new and Trap Boy Freddy. Uh, I got another one that's coming out. Uh, hold on, I'm sorry, let me back up. The one with Trap Boy Freddy was it's supposed to be in was called Wrong Address. Yeah. And, and this is about uh, I get to play a real serious role. Uh, my grandson get killed. My daughter got involved with a guy, so I get to play a real serious role uh, in, in a movie called Wrong Address that'll be out in November. Then the other movie is called We Out Here, and it's me, Amaretta, uh, shit, I can't think of the other people's name. Uh, but but it's a movie kind of centered around the Atlanta freak Uh and they tricked me because it's really a, a, a movie about gays. But it, it talks about how the the uh, it, it shows you how when Atlanta first started having the freak nicks, that's where the gay migration came from. That's how all the gays ended up in Atlanta from, from the freak nicks. So you had the gangsters and the gays both attending the freak nicks. And in some kind of way, the gangsters and gays fell in love with each other. Uh, so yeah, so uh, that movie, uh, 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 me, uh, me, me and Funny Marco, me and Funny Marco got, a, got, got some more, got, got another, Got another interview coming where we gonna be out in the wilderness doing some things. Uh, I just got a deck. I just got a deck last week for for this new movie that's gonna kind of be like it's gonna be house party, Friday, and Home Alone all in one movie. Uh, and it's gonna be me, Carlos Miller, uh, Waka Flocka, uh, the the little kid, the little rapping kid, RT. Uh, I think they had Aiden Ross in it, so it's, it's gonna be real, real. So it's go it's a concept of me. Uh, a, a uncle who once sold weed uh, changed my life. Somehow I go to jail for something from the past. Uh, my nephew is left at home, which would be RT. Uh, he left at home by himself. He putting together this big old house party. He gonna be throwing. Carlos gonna be a nigga trying to break in the house. And yeah, so it, it, so it's gonna be a hell of a movie. Uh, uh, shit, man, I got so many. I got so. Uh, I just signed a contract. Uh, with an app company where I'm gonna be a brand ambassador for for this this new app company is gonna allow uh, artists, podcasters, uh, whatever you do, uh, to be able to stream or do your performances here uh, on this app. As soon as you hit end, uh, you get paid within two to three days. So uh, so I get I, I yeah I, I signed a deal with 10% equity into that company. So uh, that'll pay me when I'm dead and gone. So uh. So 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 we got that. Uh, I got some people trying to work on me a bitcoin. So they 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 think if they make a bitcoin, that I, I can damn near do what Fifty did in one day. And I don't believe in the bitcoin shit. Uh, so you know, uh, I agree to just see what. It is. Uh, shit, man, I got so much shit on the table, homie. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got a lot of shit on the table, homie. Uh, I uh. I want to get into streaming, so I turned down a five million five million dollar deal with Kick uh, because I, I didn't want to be beholden uh, to the thing that Kick has some people beholden to. Uh, but man, I sure hate I did. But now that I done seen this shit, nigga, I'm coming over here with y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm coming over with y'all, man. Throw some confetti up. Yeah, nah, nigga, I'm coming over. Nah, nah, this the future, nigga. This the future. Confetti. Yeah, everybody throw some confetti out for Mr. White. Give me some emojis. Let me get some confetti, man. Yeah, nah, I'm coming over with y'all, my nigga. You got damn right, I do. Hold on, hold on. We gonna, we, gonna, we gonna talk about all that right after this. We got y'all. Shout out Trap Street Radio. Make sure y'all check out Trap, Trap Again's coming later this month. You know what I'm saying? All right, Mr. White. Yes, sir. You know, I've been watching you for like years now. It yeah. never gets old. The topics you tackle, you not only tackle like modern sort of pop culture when it comes to the hip hop artists and these gangster rappers, you talk about politics as well. Yeah. Well, uh, the reason I target the, the, the culture, the streets, the street niggas and the gangster rappers, uh, I'm coming out of college, nigga, with all, I think I done took psychology. Uh, philosophy, nigga been writing all these motherfucking papers, research papers, uh, informative papers, persuasive, and nigga doing all this writing. So nigga, when I come to the internet, nigga, I'm a, I'm a well of information. I'm a well of knowledge. Nigga, I've been reading books. I ain't been fucking with Google. 
Because in college, you can't you can't use Google as a as a source of, of information, right? So nigga, I've been I'm spending 12, 18 hours in the library, uh, and I ain't got no car. So nigga, I'm riding the bus to the college. So three years in the three years in the college, uh, you learn about the library databases. The library databases are where all the information and shit is, man. Uh where all your most brilliant-minded people have left their minds in, in the form of literacy work. So all your scholars, uh, every man is all in the library database. But if you don't go to the library and get on a computer, you can't access these databases. So the, the Google engine search keep most niggas dumb. Hmm. I'm going to say it again. The Google engine search keep most niggas dumb because you can pay to put some at the top of Google. Yeah. So normally the, the most accurate and, 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 and most verified information is on the third page of a Google page site. So when I get to the internet, homie, I'm, I'm a well of information. So most of my conversation was that. So I was saying things like uh, Confucius. The average nigga don't even know who Confucius is. Uh, Confucius once said, he who controls images control minds. So when I look at hip hop, Hip hop is a mind con mind altering tool that controls our youth mind by way of imagery. What kind of imagery? Gangster images. So that's what I start attacking. Uh, those images. So when I went after the rappers, the rapper is not the man. The rapper is the persona and the image of this man. But our kids think that these niggas is what they're pr projecting and portraying to be. Uh, so what I realize is that. The rappers are mimicking the real street guys, and the kids are mimicking the rappers. That's why they say, oh, man, you, you want to look like a rapper. No, nigga, this is how players look. Players have always had a pinky ring, a watch, a chain. The rapping niggas is mimicking this. So uh, I brought that to the internet, uh, but that was my frustration. Because in my mind, as I'm talking, I don't know y'all listening. I can only see 200 people on this screen. So, so, so yeah, no, nah, man. So, uh, once I figured out you can get paid, homie, every time I cut that camera on, I'm playing for the camera. Every man, once I realized that you can get paid for this shit, why would I get on here and bring me to the internet? So what I realized when I came to the internet, the internet was saying, ah, look at your hair. Ah, look at your dreads. Look at your eye. Ah, look at your teeth. Ah, look at your car models. Ah, look at, so they looking at that. The internet don't want positivity. That's why positive titles and positive videos don't go viral. I gave the internet and I gave black people what they wanted. Yes, sir. And I get paid very well for it now. It's called supply and demand. Yeah. Yeah, it's called supply and demand. So, uh, I learned the algorithm. I learned to be negative, to be mean, and to be ugly, because that's how you conquer the algorithm. And now I am the algorithm. Mr. White, we go. We gonna take. We gonna take two more questions if anybody got them. If y'all don't. Right? We want to make sure that everybody can come over here. We're going to take a few pictures with Mr. White. And then, um, sir, I just want to say I thank you for your time. I really respect what you're doing, what you say, because I see the meaning behind it. Um, I respect your body of work. And as somebody who's, you know, I used to be one of those youth growing up in the urban areas. Yeah. And seeing how you change the lives for people, seeing how you care for the youth, even when you read through your comedy at your comedy show last night, you was making some great points, but using the humor to really challenge it, to tap the brains. And I can see the minds working in the crowd. Paul Mooney said, the greatest joke ever told was told as the truth. The greatest truth ever told was told as a joke. Yeah. Uh, that's why your comedian be so raw and truthful. It can make you laugh saying it. But because I came with such a offensive persona, nobody wanted to say he's a comedian because I offended people first. I didn't make them laugh at first. 
I didn't know how to make people laugh at first, homie. I was offensive. Uh, the internet starts saying you should do comedy. The internet starts saying, ah, you Rat Williams, you Cat Williams. So I had to figure out a way to, to supersede the persona on the internet because he's becoming so polarizing. So my internet persona started to supersede Charleston White the man. So people didn't book Charleston. Nigga, they want that internet persona. The first two to three years, people booking the persona. They didn't want the man. I show up as the man. Nigga, they want the persona. So I wanted to separate. I, I wanted to put each person in his own category. So you got Rat Williams, Charleston White, Chicken Shit Charlie. Rat Williams is the one that do comedy. Charleston White is the one that talks prolific and, you know, seems intelligent and chicken shit.